So the agreement came about, uh, from what we've been told, uh, shuttle diplomacy by uh, parties, including the UN, but also between local organizations and groups that were pushing for some consensus on what should be done or what the next steps should look like. Um, I think one of the, the things that is in the stipulations of the agreement is that, uh, for example, parts of the agreement which looks at uh, the reconstitution of, um, in this case, the enforcement committee uh, will be restructured, uh, that the, the prime minister can appoint a technocratic government uh, of his choosing. Um, and so there are some differences. We're not sure fully how much uh, they're different from the previous agreement. But we do know that the previous agreement is the one that is sort of binding, as it were, legally binding uh, in this case. However, I think one of the challenges that we, we're seeing from this, as you mentioned in your uh, opening, is that most of the civilians, in this case women, uh, youth, but also the everyday uh, Sudanese people are actually calling against this. And for weeks, um, while there is an agreement between the civilians and the tra uh, transitional or, uh, military uh, forces, many of the civilians have said that actually they do not want uh, a joint agreement and actually what they would want is a civilian agreement. So it's, I think for me, the question here is that how much of this uh, pushing for this joint agreement is really going to hold, particularly where civilians uh, are actually calling for the opposite thing, which they actually want the military to have no say in this. And, and that's a, a point I'd like to further explore, Andrew, because, of course, the military, even by making this agreement, it would suggest that they are concerned about the ongoing protests and the fact that people are really objecting to their role going forward. Yes, it does. And, and, and to an extent, it also shows that they are not just concerned for their future, but also that some, to a certain extent, maybe international pressure and regional pressure has worked in this case. I, I'm not thinking of the, the regional body, but I'm thinking of uh, Middle Eastern countries have, who have applied pressure, the UN, uh, but also the African Union and others. Uh, but what it does do, I think, it, what it does do is it shifts the narrative away from the prime minister uh, but also focuses on this joint agreement, which to a large extent, as I said, is not what the civilians want. So in essence, we're delivering something that, again, we see in many parts of the African continent that people are not uh, supporting. So why do we have this agreement in place? And so it does uh, raise a larger question is, if we want to uh, put in place stability for the region, do these type of agreements work in theory? And are they sustainable uh, for the very people that it's supposed to be governing? So then, if this agreement is not what, what people want, how is something put in place that would be acceptable? So I think what needs to be put in place, and what is key here, particularly because Sudan and South Sudan and their own agreement, the Juba Peace Agreement uh, and other agreements that have been put in place, are interlinked, I think you're going to need supplementary agreements or support. And in this case, I'm really thinking about how the African Union uh, can mobilise some of its good practices and uh, stabilisation uh, policies or approaches to help uh, support Sudan. Uh, countries like the Troika, which is composed of the US, the UK and Norway, how can they come together collectively to support uh, and sustain uh, peace in Sudan? And so sort of uh, unified but also coherent and cohesive strategies need to be uh, put in place quite quickly. Uh, if not, this whole entire thing could ravel, even though we have an agreement in principle. Yeah. Tell me what you think it's going to mean for any sort of comfortable transition or peaceful transition to democratic elections. Well, I wouldn't call it comfortable, but I would call it one where maybe there will be a lack of trust. And again, we're talking about uh, parties or actors who ne initially were struggling to join the initial agreement or were untrustworthy of the, of the, of the military. And so how do you, in this sort of climate, uh, bring these parties together? to make sure that the agreement holds, particularly where trust has been, um, has, has dissipated. And so that for me, I think is the key thing. How do we sustain it? What can the African Union, but also the regional bodies put in place to support uh, this agreement long term, particularly if it's one that we know that civilians don't support? Um, what are the stabilization strategies that can be put in place long term to help Sudan recover? Andrew, as always, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.